Hi everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at how to use NoteShelf for using your D&D digital journal. So let's get started. So first things first, we're just going to open up the NoteShelf app on our device. And note that this uh, tutorial is done on an iPad because that's the only device that I personally own at the moment, hoping to get another one in the future soon so I can also show tutorials on Android devices. But for now, this is what I have. However, the app should work pretty similarly between the two uh, different devices. The first thing that we're going to do is import our journal. So we're going to press this import file here on the side and we'll navigate to wherever it is that we have our journal saved on our device and we can just go ahead and open one. I will pick the warlock for today and we're just going to press open. It'll take a second, but then as you can see, the uh, journal will appear right over here. So we're just going to click on it to open it and voila, we've got our journal open in our app. So that's the first big thing we have to do here. Okay, so as you can see, we have our journal open and it might look a little different when you first open it. If you're just opening NoteShelf for the first time, um, your journal might look something like this when you open it. See how there's multiple pages, they're not all like fitting evenly here. Um, so the best way to fix this is if you just go up to the top right hand corner and you press these three little dots, it'll bring down our kind of main menu here. And if you go down to where it says scrolling, Right now it's set to vertical scrolling, but if you just put it on horizontal scrolling, then that'll clean up that issue and this will look really much nicer and you'll be able to um, swipe sideways rather than up and down to change pages. Of course, um, this being a digital journal as well, you've got all these great hyperlinks that you can use. So just to use those, all you do is you just press on them on the side here and that'll change the different sections of where you're going. And as you can see, the main sections are kind of tabbed along the side with the subsections being up along the top. So let's go over some just the basic functions of NoteShelf so that you feel comfortable using this software. So let's go ahead and start with the pen tool. So that's the very first tool that you'll see here. And if you click on it, you know, you can uh, kind of pick what kind of pen you want to use, whether it's like a ballpoint or a stylus or like a little micron pen or a pencil. So you just pick whatever pen you like. You can test them out, see uh, what you like best. But I'm just going to use the regular one here. As you can see, there's a little color palette right here on the side. So that's how you change your color. You can either pick one of the colors here or you can pick the little wheel to uh, kind of pick your color based on a palette, a grid, a spectrum, whatever you want to do. If you want to pull a color from something in the document, then you can just press this little eyedropper tool right here, click on something and the color will add. See, there it is there. If you want to add this to the presets, you just press this little button right here. And now that color will show up in this main little box, which is kind of nifty. So if you want to find a color nice and quick, that's how you do it. Um, so from there, all you have to do if you have your stylus is just start writing, right? You can just write in your journal. If you need to undo something you do, you press this little button right here up on the corner, but that is how you write. Over here along the bottom, you can see that was kind of thin when I tried to write here, right? Not the best. I also have the messiest handwriting in the world, but there you go. <laughs> it's a little on the thin side. So to change the thickness, you can just press one of these little options right here and it'll change Whoa, that's really thick, but yeah, it'll change the thickness to something a little bit thicker, right? So that's the basics of the pen tool, pretty easy to use. The next tool on your toolbar is the highlighter tool, uh, which is similar to the pen tool, except the highlighter is great because you can just highlight things and it'll actually show up behind the text in the PDF so it doesn't like get all cloudy looking. So it's just kind of a nice way to you know, draw attention to something in your notes or whatever you have to do. It works the same way as the pen tool where you can change the color here along the side any way you'd like. You can change the thickness if you want like a really thick highlighter. There you go. I don't know why I picked gray, but there you have it. That is an easy step-by-step uh, -step on the highlighter tool. The next tool on the toolbar is the eraser tool. And the eraser tool, go figure, it erases. So if you don't like something that you wrote, you can just select the eraser tool and go to town and get rid of it all. Um, if you click on the eraser tool, you do get a few options here, again, of the size. And you can also change exactly what the eraser is erasing. So you can have it erase everything. You can have it erase only highlighter, only pencil. So it's good to be able to have those different options sometimes in case there is only certain things you want to erase and you don't want to erase everything. So for example, if I have something written with my pen here, 
if I have something written with a pencil or if I have something with a highlighter, I can go back to my eraser tool and select, I only want to erase the pencil. And when I go to do that, see how only the pencil will erase, right? It doesn't erase the pen, it doesn't erase the highlighter. Same thing with erase highlighter tool. I can erase the highlighter without getting rid of any of my other text. And erase entire stroke will just get kind of get rid of everything there. Okay, so the next little part here is our shape tool. Our shape tool allows us to kind of make easy shapes for ourselves. Um, I'm actually gonna go to a different section here just so we have a little bit of a bigger page to work with. So I'm just gonna go to one of the notes sections so that we have a nice blank page. Okay, so the shape tool, basically if you draw a shape and you just kind of hold it, it'll snap the shape to be a little bit cleaner, which is nice. So it's just an easy way to draw shapes and have them kind of be a little neater looking than maybe they would turn out otherwise. You can also use this tool to draw straight lines. You can use it to draw, you know, sh squares and shapes that are a little more easily done, which is nice. And you can rotate the shapes and do whatever you need to do with them. If you click on this, you can get a whole bunch of other shapes, which is great in case you want to draw a diamond or a polygon and the same way that you erased anything else you can erase these shapes as well in the context of the dnd digital journal i like to use the shape tool sometimes maybe you're exploring a dungeon or something and you just want to quickly as you're going through maybe it's very confusing very maze-like and you just want to quickly you know um map it out so this is a great way to just be like okay we had these rooms and these come here and this one here just so you know exactly what you're doing. So that's one fun way that you can use the shape tool within the context of the D&D journal. Okay, so next we're gonna look at the text tool. The text tool is one of my favorite because as cool as it is to be able to handwrite um, in a digital journal, I personally have very messy handwriting. So I like to use the text tool whenever I can because it just makes everything a little bit neater. Text tool allows you to use your keyboard to type. So quick overview of the text tool. It's this little one with the T on it. And all you have to do to get the text going is you just click anywhere that you want to write and then you can start typing. Hello. If you want to change the font or anything like that, it's pretty easy. All you do, you click on again, wherever you want to type. If you go over to the side here, you can see these little letter buttons. You just click on it and that is how you are able to change your font. And you should be able to change your font to anything that you have installed on your iPad or your other or whatever device it is that you're using. So I'll just pick this one. Obviously there's a lot of different options. You could do regular, you could do bold, et cetera, et cetera. And now when you type, you can see the font has changed to this new font. What you can also do in here, you can change the orientation, you can underline it, you can change the font size, the line height. There's a lot of different options here that you can play around with to get the text exactly how you'd like. You can also change the color, which is nice. So you can change it to a nice red or a purple. And whenever you're happy with that, if you get a font that you're like, this is the font I wanna use for my entire journal, what you can do is you can set it as the default. So you just scroll down in that little font area and you say set as default and you can choose either this notebook or all future notebooks. Um, I'm just gonna choose this notebook because different notebooks might have different styles and I might want something else. So now that you've set that as the default, every time you click and you start something new, it will be in the font and in the color that you've just created, which is great. So now we don't have to redo that work every single time, which is awesome. Note Shelf also has this cool little feature called presets, which you'll notice are shown here. And this just kind of gives you different presets for different areas that you might want to use. So maybe you want a header or your body or a caption or something like that. So um, they have these different things and you can see the font change depending on which preset I used which is pretty cool. If you wanna make your own presets, it's also pretty easy. You just click this little three dots right here and you add a preset and you can choose the font and the style. You can give it a name. I'm gonna call this, ooh, 
my style. There you go. Or maybe I, that's a stupid name. All right. Uh, maybe I want to call this my headers. There you go. And I want this to be a bold font. I'm not a fan of sans serif. So let's pick a nice serif font to make my little heart happy. Um, and we're just gonna make it purple and it's a big size and maybe I want this to be underlined every time I use this preset, okay? So we've got that set, so we're just gonna go back and now you can see my headers, whoop. Now you can see my headers shows up over here and I can just actually delete that. Maybe I want this one to show up first, so I'm gonna bring it over to the top here. There you go. So now you can see I've got this little thing right here which is the preset that I just created. So when I go to click on something with my type tool to start typing, I can click my header. And now my header is the one that shows up. So I've got my nice purple text, it's underlined, it's in the font that I want, and I can create as many of these as I want. I'm, I'm sure there's a limit, but I, you can create quite a few of them. Um, and that way you can just quickly switch between them. That way you can be like, okay, this is my header, this is my subsection, these are the different fonts or the different colors that I want for different things. So it's a very useful little tool to have. Some of the other things you can do with your text, you can um, obviously change the alignment of the text, which is always very useful. And it kind of just goes by like tabbing here, you can see. You can create bullet points, which is also useful, especially if you're taking notes in a session, you wanna just bullet, okay, this is what we did today, right? We slew a dragon and we talked to a shopkeeper or what have you, right? And you can just put these wherever you want in your notes. You can also, do numbers. So if you have a to-do list of today, we need to obtain a diamond. We need to explore the sewers, whatever it is, what have you. We can also make these into checklists, which are nice because then you can just kind of check things off as you do them. This little uh, button right here gives you a little sticky note. If you wanted to write on a little sticky note, then it turns that thing into a little pink note just to make it stand out. Of course, it can be any color you'd like. So if I'm starting something here and I want a sticky note, it can be yellow, blue, green. You can make it your own color using this custom thing, which is kind of nice. It just gives it a little bit of an extra pop when you need it. So the next tool we're going to explore is going to be the lasso tool, uh, which is probably one of the more important tools because this is how we can uh, change and delete and move things around in our journal easily. So the lasso tool lets you just make a circle around something to select it, which means you can then move it, you can copy it. Um, backing up for just a sec, the way that I pasted it was I just held down my finger and pressed paste. You can delete. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do here with this tool. You can resize. It's kind of your go-to tool for a lot of different things in your journal. So there's a lot of different stuff. You can, oh, I like this one. You can change the color of something. So if you have a whole bunch of text and you want to just change the color of all of it, you can just go in here and do that pretty easily with the lasso tool, which is awesome. Um, there are a few different options, as you can see with the lasso tool, kind of like with the eraser tool, you can have it only select certain things, which is great. You can have it only select handwriting, you can have it select text boxes, photos. So depending on what you choose, it will only select those things, which is really, really nice because if you have a whole lot of stuff on your page and you're only trying to get rid of one thing, it makes it a lot easier to do that. All right, so here's an example of what I mean when I say um, the lasso tool can only select certain things. So when we click on it, note right now everything is selected, but say I only want to select handwriting. So you can see I put a few different things on the page here. I put some text, I put a picture of a bird, and I have this handwritten thing that says bird. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna circle around all of this just to show you how this works. So I've circled over everything, but because I've only got handwriting selected, the only thing that's actually selecting is the handwriting, which is great. So if all of this stuff was kind of layered on top of each other, I can maybe delete the handwriting without getting rid of anything else, which is awesome. This works the same way with text boxes, with photos. If I only want to select the photo and I don't want to be super precise about it, I can just select the photo and move that around. So I usually keep them all highlighted unless I'm trying to do something very specific there. 
So the next thing we're going to look at is going to be the preview tool, which is a little document with the eyeball on it. Um, and this is just going to change this to a read only mode, which means that nothing we do with the pen or the stylus will make any effect. It's just an easy way of getting through the journal without um, mucking it up in any way with our stylus or with our finger that we don't mean to. So this is useful if we're not in a phase of writing, we're just checking our stats, we're just going back between pages to find information, then read only is a great place to be because you won't accidentally make changes to the journal that you don't mean to make. So um, another thing is if your hyperlinks for some reason are giving you an issue, they shouldn't, but in case they are, switching over to read only mode will usually solve that. All right, so let's talk about a few other things here. So by default, you may not have, I think usually the default one only ends here where you don't have the rest of these other options um, on here. The way that you can kind of change that is if you uh, hold down one of these buttons over here, you can see this menu pops up that says customize toolbar, and that'll let you add some different things to your top toolbar, which is great, or you can delete things that you're not using. Like I don't use Note Shelf AI, so let's just get rid of that. Um, and you can add things, like you can see it online, I have added photo stickers and bookmarks. Um, you can add Zoom boxes, audio. There's a lot of different things that you can add. Most of these, for the sake of this journal, aren't extremely necessary, I would say. So I kind of just leave them off but it is nice that you can customize this however you'd like. So as you can see, I added up here at the top, I added a photo option, I added a sticker option, and I added a bookmark option. So we're gonna go over those real quick because I think those are kind of fun and important. So the photo option will allow you to import photos. So this just comes directly from the photo section of your iPad. So this isn't the best way to import the stickers or the spell stickers, but if you wanna add a photo to something just because, this is the way that you would do it. So you click on the add photo, it'll bring up the photos in your photo reel. And then you just click on one and there it is in case you want a creepy haunted church for some reason. I'm not sure why I have that on my iPad, but <laughs> there you go. Um, that's how you would add a photo. The stickers on Note Shelf right now are kind of a little more limited than other apps like GoodNotes. Um, you have them here, the ones that are preset. I think you can download some from the shop, but it's not as easy to create your own as it is in apps like GoodNotes or Notability. So we're actually not gonna use that one too much, but if you wanted to have it, it is here. You can get some different shapes, speech bubbles, sticky notes, labels. You might like some of these for your journal. So I'm just showing you where they are. The last little one that I have on my toolbar is the bookmark tool, which I think can be really handy, especially uh, for taking session notes. I find that taking session notes, you know, there's, because of how much stuff is in this journal, sometimes it's a little hard to get to the session page that I want quickly. So when I'm in a session and I just am writing stuff here, you know, all the things that we did. Oh, whoa, that's a really big pen, hold on. <laughs> Like I am writing in my notes here, right? Okay, so let's say I want to get to this page really quickly without going through all of the different tabs to get there. I'm just going to press the little bookmark page and now that page is bookmarked. And the way that I can find that is if I go over to these little squares on the side here, it'll kind of bring up this side menu. Now this side menu will show pretty much every page in the journal, which can be a little overwhelming because there's a lot of them. But if you just click on the bookmarks, you can see that only the page that I bookmarked is right here. So that can be kind of nice because if I'm scrolling, I'm doing different things, I'm looking at my stats, I can quickly press on that. And once I selected the bookmarks, it'll kind of stay. And so now my bookmark page is already there. So I can just quickly click on it and get to my bookmark, which is awesome. And then I can keep it even open on the side so that I have it. If I need to reference it quickly, if I'm going back and forth between different pages, that's a great way to have those pages open while still retaining the functionality of the rest of your journal. This is actually one of my favorite things about Note Shelf over some of the other apps that I use sometimes, like GoodNotes or Notability, is that the book notes, sorry, is that the bookmarks are on the side here rather than covering up the screen because it makes you able to quickly go back and forth between using both of them.
All right, let's talk about adding our stickers to our notebook. So one of the best ways that we can add our spell stickers or any of our other stickers to our digital journal here is by clicking this little plus mark on the side. This will bring up an, a, an add menu of different things that you can add to your journal. This first page deals mostly with like adding pages, adding documents, which we're not really gonna mess with because I don't wanna mess with the hyperlink structure of the overall document. But we can also add images. This is another way to add things from our camera roll. We can add audio recordings, emojis, stickers, and all sorts of things. For what we wanna use this for, import media is going to be the best one, the best one that we're gonna be able to use. So if you click on import media, that'll bring up your system dialog of your device, of all your files, and I'm up. All right, so go to wherever it is that you have these saved. I'm gonna go to the spell stickers. I'll do the class list one and get the warlock going here. And as you can see, we have all of our spell stickers here ready to go. What's great about this way of adding these stickers is that you can select a lot of them at once. You can go through this whole folder and just select whichever spells you want to add in. And then when you have them all selected, you're just gonna press open. And as you can see, it opened all of these stickers. Well, that's a big one. Oh gosh, some of these big, these big spells in D&D, they just drive me crazy. I'm just gonna delete that one because I don't wanna deal with it. All right, um, so here we go. As you can see, we've got our stickers in here. They kind of all layered on top of each other. So I just want to select, wait a sec, there we go. So if I just want to select one of them, I'm just going to tap on it with my finger. And as you can see, there are multiple spells here that I imported. I'm actually going to select all of them because I want to resize them all uniformly. And so I'm just going to do that and kind of get them about the size of the little boxes that are here. I'm not being perfect about it. You can, of course, be very precise and get them perfect. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to go quickly. But there we go. Now we've got our spells here that you can align and put in your journal and have ready to go. Of course, only the spells that are included are the SRD ones. Um, we don't have all of the spells because we're not legally allowed to print all of them. So if there are any that you don't have because they're from one of the other source books, like Tasha's Culture of Everything or Xanathar's Guide, um, then you will have to enter those spells in manually, but you can do that with the text tool. So we can import our other stickers in the exact same way. So if we are journaling and we want to add some fun little stickers to our page here, the way we're going to do that is exactly the same. We're going to press on that plus mark. We're going to say import media. So we're just going to go to the adventurer sticker book that comes with the bundle. And we're going to want to select the PNG files because those are the image files for the stickers. So as you can see, we've got them all kind of laid out in different categories here. Um, I'm just gonna go with, I mean, let's go with dice, because dice are fun, right? So if I wanna have a nice dice sticker that I'm gonna add here, I'm gonna select the sticker. I'm gonna press open. This is exactly the same thing that we did for our spell stickers. We've got those here, you can get that. You can move it around if you wanna select it again, just tap on it, you can resize it. And that's how we import our stickers. So that's pretty much um, what you need to get started with using NoteShelf. There are, I'm sure, other little tips and tricks that you can pick up along the way, but that will give you the basic uh, amount of information that you need just to get started using the app and using it with your journal. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, always reach out. I'm always happy to help um, troubleshoot any problems you might be having or help if you're trying to do something very specific and help you figure that out. I hope that you love your journals. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.